Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 5, the long run consequences of stabilization policies. Inside of this unit, we are on the Phillips curve, which is subunit 5.2, and we are on part 4 of 5.2. And in this video, we are focused on the neighbor. The what? The neighbor. That's right. The non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Let me say that again the non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. What the heck is that? That is the lowest the, the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate starting to accelerate upwards. Again, it is the lowest the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate starting to accelerate upwards. Now, to understand this concept, we're going to use our Phillips curve model. I've got my inflation rate, unemployment rate, I've got my NRU, national rate of unemployment, LRPC, SRPC. So the question is, where am I going to put the neighbor? I'm going to put the NARU exactly where the NRU is. You see, they're the same unemployment rate, all right? The natural rate of unemployment and the NARU are the same unemployment rate. So I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to put N-A-I-R-U. Why is that? Well, let's talk about the natural rate of unemployment for a second. When we were at the natural rate of unemployment, we have zero cyclical unemployment, and we have structural and frictionally unemployed people. You see, if the unemployment rate gets above the NRU gets over to the right in this model, that means we have cyclically unemployed people. And it's, here's the deal, guys. We can hire cyclically unemployed people without putting any upward pressure on wages. That's right, guys. Why are people cyclically unemployed? Because we had a downturn in the economy, right? That's why they're cyclically unemployed. They were laid off. We can hire them without having to offer them higher wages. There will be no upward pressure on wages. And so, over here, okay, there's not going to be any inflationary pressures as we hire more workers. But, if we ever try to get to the left of the NRU, we're going to have to hire structurally and frictionally unemployed workers. Both of those cause inflation. You see, if we hire the frictionally unemployed, how do you do that? If you're trying to find somebody that's out there looking for a job, all right, imagine that a, a candidate comes into your office, they're looking for a job, and by the way, this is a situation that the economy is booming. You really want to hire them. How are you going to get them to stop looking for a job and take your job immediately? You're going to have to offer them some type of higher wage, which is going to put upward pressure on wages. Or, if you hire structurally unemployed people, it's not the actual wage that you're paying them more, but it's going to cost you more to hire them because you're going to have to hire them and then you're going to have to train them. So here's the takeaway, guys. If you hire the, stru sorry, the structurally or the frictionally unemployed, that puts a lot of upward pressure on wages. So to get to the right of the NRU, that's going to be very inflationary because when wages go up, SRAS shifts, and when SRAS shifts to the left, because that's what it would do, that's going to cause the price level and inflation rate to start heading upward, okay? Whew. All right, let's do an example really quickly. Let's really see this in action. Let's imagine that the NARU is actually 5%. That's what it is. But let me be very clear, guys. Nobody sets that. Nobody says that that's what it is. That's, that is what it's going to be. It's not a policy decision. It is what it is based on the structure of your economy and a few other things, okay? But nobody just says the NARU is 5%. I want you to think it basically has to be discovered, okay? It's got to be discovered. So let's imagine that our Fed doesn't know that the NARU is 5%, and they think it's actually 4%. They think the NARU and the NRU, because they're the same, is 4%. And let's also think that we are actually at our true NARU, which is 5%. So what does that mean? That means the Fed is going to think we are in a recession. They think, again, that the NARU is 4%, but we are at 5%. They're going to be like, hey, we're in a recession. We need to do expansionary monetary policy. We need to get our unemployment rate from 5% to 4%. So what are they going to do? They're going to increase the money supply, right? Lowering interest rates, getting more spending, trying to shift AD to the right. When they do that, guys, what are they going to cause? When they shift AD to the right, we know that causes a movement along our SRPC. Which direction? Well, inflation rate's going to go up, unemployment rate's going to go down. They're going to try to move us to that point, point B. Now, when we get there, and that unemployment rate gets to 4%, and the only way we're doing that, the only way we're getting there is by businesses 
hiring more and more people, the structurally and the frictionally unemployed, and why are they doing that? Because spending is spurring production, and they're saying, hey, we've got all this demand, let's try to produce more. And so as they hire the structurally and frictionally unemployed people, we can get down to 4% in the short run. Of course, we cannot be there in the long run. So what's going to happen? They get us to here, and they say, good, we got it, we fixed the economy. No, they didn't. What are wages going to do? They're going to start going up because the only way we got to be is we struck, we, we, we went into that frictionally and structurally unemployed labor pool. Wages are going to start to go up. SRAS is going to shift left. Think about that ASAD model, guys. Price level is going to go up and we're going to return to full employment output back to our true NRU or NARU. So I'm going to show us moving back over to Letter C, the SRPC is going to shift, which we know, guys. The SRAS is shifting to the left, therefore the SRPC is shifting right. Remember, SRAS shifts, SRPC shifts. So we head over to here. What's the Fed going to think? They're going to think, oh my gosh, we just fell back into a recession. What do we need to do? Hey, we got to get that unemployment rate back to 4%. So what are they going to do? They're going to do easy monetary policy, and they're going to drive us back to 4%. But this time, you can see that inflation rate is going to go up. In other words, take a look at this. At A, say the inflation rate was 2%. At C and D, let's call that an inflation rate of 4%. And D, let's call that an inflation rate of 6%. At A, the inflation rate could have just stayed 2%. When they moved us to B, if they try to keep us at 4%, what is going to happen? We will start to see the inflation rate simply accelerate upward. Now, in my example, I said that they stopped doing things when we fell there and then they drove us to here. But here's what could have happened just as easily. They drive us to 4% unemployment rate and then they say, I'm gonna keep us there. And they just see that, they see the unemployment rate tick up at all, they go, no, 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 I'm gonna keep us there. I'm gonna make us stay there. And therefore, we don't even have to do this B, C, D. If they just keep us at 4%, you will see that inflation rate begin to accelerate up for, upwards. Guys, we can't stay at an unemployment rate of 4% without inflation starting to accelerate upwards. In fact, 4% is an A root. Now, technically, you're never going to be asked to use that term, but what is that? It is an accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. This is an unemployment rate in which the inflation rate accelerates. So hopefully what the Fed realizes is, hey, we were wrong. It's not 4%, it's actually 5%. That's the lowest the unemployment rate can be without having any upward pressure on the price level, without having upward pressure on wages, without having inflation rate accelerate upwards. Anyhow, I know that might have been a little bit confusing. Hopefully it made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.